Swap Shop is a reality TV treasure hunting series set in rural Tennessee based on the popular radio show World Famous Swap Shop or WFSS. In a similar manner to the series such as Porn Stars and American Pickers, Netflix's Swap Shop follows nine couples who listen into the radio show every morning, waiting for the next big deal to grab cheaply and flip for a profit. World Famous Swap Shop has quite a long history. It started in 1957 and the present name was coined in 1970. The show airs every morning. Monday through Saturday, kicking off with the famous opening line, the phone lines are now open and we're ready to get swapping. The premise is rather simple. People call in to offer something up for sale, describe what it is, how much they want for the item, and how to get in touch with them. In October 2018, Debbie Beal, the owner of WRGS radio station which broadcasts WFSS, was contacted by Hit and Run Productions about making a TV show based around it. They had a lot of ideas and wanted to know if we wanted to be a part of it. At first, I was skeptical because I don't want you making fun of all my people, but they assured me that that would not be the case. I think it's going to be a cute show. Debbie said in an interview she gave for the magazine Review. She was asked to run a radio ad to ask listeners of the show to contact the production company with a view to being involved in the proposed TV show. A lot of people answered the ad and eventually the final selection of nine couples was made. The cast includes people from all over East Tennessee, such as the historian and antique collector Rodney Farrell, based in Sir Goinsville, and Mike Ringley and Jennifer Seals also participate, having previously operated an antique shop. On the other hand, the two voices who were sadly not called in by the production company are the hosts of World Famous Swap Shop themselves, Jay Phillips and Tom Davis. Their eventual appearance in the show is still not off the table though as the two surely have valuable insights into the world of antique treasure hunting. Fans of Swap Shop based outside of Tennessee can check out the original radio show on the official WRGS website, where they can also access all of the deals advertised on the show. The first season of Swap Show was released on Netflix on the 9th of November 2021. One of the starring couples of the debut season was Richard and Amber Davis, who ran a comic book store in Knoxville, Tennessee called Nirvana Comics. They founded the store in 2017 and it has since grown to be the biggest and most popular comic book store in their city, dealing in both newly released titles and rare antique finds. After the show's production began, Amber tragically passed away in December 2020 since when her husband Richard has continued running the store with help from the store manager Garen. According to an Instagram post by Richard, Amber was admitted to the UT Medical Center in Knoxville in early December 2020 to undergo a kidney transplant surgery. Even though the cause of her death has not been disclosed, it's believed that she succumbed to complications following the surgery. On the 15th of October that following year, Garen uploaded another Instagram post in honor of what would have been Amber's 39th birthday, writing in a heartfelt post, this clip in the Swap Shop trailer really hit when it dropped this week. Today is Amber's birthday, seeing her alive and well in the shop she loved. Dyson Hand for D&D, her little white minor dog by her side brought so many emotions. After Amber's tragic passing, Richard and Garen continued running Nirvana Comics and were later joined by fellow comic book enthusiasts Grant and Jasmine Mitchell, who now co-run the store with them. While Richard spent his whole life in Tennessee, Garen originally comes from Roanoke, Virginia and relocated to Knoxville to attend a local community college. The two share a strong passion for comic books pop culture, and superheroes. However, what makes their comic book shop stand out is their commitment to treat all customers with respect and give back to the community whenever possible. While they may appear to be polar opposites when it comes to conducting business, their differing personalities provide a necessary balance in all of their business endeavors. Aside from running Nirvana Comics, Garen is also the host of the Printed Panel podcast, while Richard has created his own comic book series entitled Cult of Dracula. In late January 2022, they made headlines by opening a fundraiser to give away free copies of Mouse, written in Illustrated by Art Spiegelman in 1991, Mouse is a Pulitzer Prize-winning graphic novel which tells the story of the Holocaust through animal allegory. After the book was unanimously banned from schools in McKinn County, Tennessee for containing swear words and unnecessary depictions of violence and suicide, the staff of Nirvana Comics started a GoFundMe project to raise funds to buy copies of the graphic novel and distribute them to students across East Tennessee for free. I'm sure that the school board and parents were very well-intentioned trying to protect their children, but I think they've achieved the exact opposite result because I don't think they protecting the children by shielding them from books like Mouse. They're actually harming them because they're growing up expecting the world to be something that it isn't," said Richard in a public statement about the fundraiser. They managed to surpass their goal in only four days, raising almost $70,000. The project really took off when the Star Trek Next Generation star Will Wheaton shared the story on Twitter. Nirvana Comics ultimately raised over $100,000 for the cause and are planning to distribute over 20,000 free copies of the book, along with study guides for parents and children. In February 2022, Nirvana Comics celebrated Black History Month by showcasing black creators, characters, and artists in the comic book industry. Considering what happened with Amber, staff of Nirvana Comics decided not to return for season 2 of Swap Shop, which was released on Netflix on the 16th of February 2022, featuring a new cast. 
along with some familiar faces from season one. One of the first pairs we get to see return are Dale and his business partner Scott, who own Kyger's Extreme Automotive Car Repair Shop. We follow them as they try to snag a barn-kept 1970 Plymouth GTX, complete with a 440 power plant, which could go up for $75,000 if returned to pristine condition. In one of the funniest scenes of the season, the two arrive late at the scene to find that the Plymouth had already been purchased, but instead of giving up, they chase down the buyer and eventually purchase the car. Also returning from season one are the owners of Pickers Paradise, Jen and Doug, who are rushing to get a deal at an estate sale, at which they're greeted by JD and Bobby, another pair of seasoned pickers, and have to compete for the most valuable items. The possible third season hasn't been filmed yet, and Netflix still hasn't officially renewed the show. While fans of the series are expecting to see more after two short seasons consisting of only six episodes each, there may not be a lot to hold on to, as Netflix is notorious for chopping down even its most successful shows in favor of series. Both seasons of Swap Shop take place in East Tennessee, within the reach of WRGD radio airwaves. It perfectly highlights how their well-famous Swap Shop became an integral part of the local culture. The radio station is located in Rogersville, Hawkins County. However, we're yet to see pickers from this town featured in the Netflix series. The majority of the businesses seen featured in the show are based in Knoxville, including Nirvana Comics and Monterey Mexican. Businesses from other parts of Tennessee are West Main Antiques and Vintage from Johnson City, Kiker's Extreme Automotive, located in Greenville, and JD's Realty and Auction from Clinton. Aside from these, a number of local barns and farms have been a vital part of production of the show. It's also been speculated that the crew may have filmed some scenes in other states, but these rumors haven't been confirmed by the production team. Showcased on numerous popular reality TV shows which aired in recent years, antique collecting is the art of gathering items of aesthetic, historical, and monetary value, and is nothing new. The first records of antique picking date back to the 16th century, when private collections of rarities flourished in Europe. The 18th century saw a significant development in the field of archaeology, which heightened public interest in collecting and preserving historical rarities. American pickers became seriously active during that period, collecting old books, manuscripts, and memoirs, as well as everyday items. Items. As part of the Centennial Exposition held in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1876, finely crafted household articles and furniture attracted many collectors. By the 20th century, most collectors were specializing in one kind of antique objects, collecting items such as postal stamps, jewelry, coins, needlework, and various others. Oftentimes, although the value of an antique item is determined by its rarity, the price is also influenced by the item's overall aesthetic, the buyer's nostalgia, and the value an item holds to them personally, i.e. how much they're willing to pay. Therefore, pickers often try to get a hold of objects associated with a certain stylistic current that is going through a revival of interest. Antique dealers use a variety of sources to find their items, such as auctions, flea markets, and garage sales. For fans of offbeat reality shows such as Swap Shop, there is a bunch of series with a similar vibe currently streaming on Netflix. One of the most quirky reality series has to be Blow Away, a soothing, glass-blowing competition show that centers on this mesmerizing art form, which has largely been ignored by mainstream culture. The Great British Bake Off is another, more or less gentle competition show, featuring a group of amateur bakers as they face off in a series of challenges, attempting to impress the judges with their baked goods. Originally airing on Channel 4 in 2010, all 12 seasons of the show have found their way to stream platforms, where they've attracted a previously untouched fan base, especially during recent lockdowns. Netflix's original competition series, The Big Flower Fight, is similar to The Great British Bake Off, except with floral arrangements instead of cakes and pastries. Hosted by comedians Natasha Demetrius and Vic Reeves, with Kristen Griffith Vanderyat as the judge, the series has built a small but loyal fan base and has been branded emotional comfort food by TV critics. When the first season of the cult classic reality series Tidying Up Marie Kondo saw its release in 2019, it made a lot of traction online, with the host's signature phrase, this sparks joy. The show follows Marie as she helps her clients tidy up the living spaces and provide them with helpful tips on how to keep the house clean and tidy at all times. There's no doubt that such series as mentioned are set to continue, simply because demonstrated viewers' interest is vital to the business of the channels and stations we produce them. So, any guesses as to what's next? Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.